Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 5th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from New York City, New York. In today's diary by Jesse, we see another example of a phishing site taking advantage of client-side technologies and cloud services to avoid having to maintain the larger footprint necessary to run sort of more traditional, complete dynamic website with server-side code. The alternative is, of course, to use JavaScript on the client and then to have various APIs to work with uh, for you. In the example provided by Jesse, the phishing page uses JavaScript to connect to Telegram and then to send data to an adversary's Telegram address. The phishing page itself is hosted at workers.dev. That's actually a Cloudflare service that can be used to host serverless code. Between the use of workers.dev, a frequently used legitimate site, and Telegram, phishing attacks are difficult to stop as they use fairly common legit services, so they don't really stick out in your network traffic. And I mentioned yesterday how the rule Microsoft published initially to block exploitation of the new exchange vulnerabilities, well, it uh, wasn't sufficient. It had this ad symbol in there that was really too specific and did allow some working exploits. Microsoft now released an updated rule, removing the ad symbol from the original rule. The new rule will be applied automatically if you have the exchange emergency mitigation service enabled. If not, Microsoft made an updated script available to block exploitation with the new rule. So far, I haven't really heard about any bypasses for the new rule. Doesn't mean they don't exist. And given that, that there may be bypasses, well, I told you yesterday how important it is to consider detecting the post-exploit activity to defend against new attacks like the current uh, exchange attacks. But, well, uh, that's really true for any attack like that. CISA has published a new alert which details regarding a recent exchange server compromise. The actual exchange server compromise actually happened back in January 2021. So uh, this was an older vulnerability. The attacker in this case used the open source tool set Impacket. Impacket is a set of Python libraries, a little bit uh, like Scapy to interact with different network protocols. In particular, the attackers used WMI exec.py and smb exec.py. These tools uh, do interact with, well, the Windows management instrumentation and the SMB protocol. This then allowed the attacker to move laterally. The write-up makes a good read if you're currently defending an exchange server. Like I said, these techniques could be applied even outside of uh, the exchange vulnerability or really any Windows environment as it shows how some of these not so frequently used tools were leveraged and of course how you may detect them. And PHP users, uh, be aware that you are also the subject of a possible supply chain attacks. Sonar source found another vulnerability in the PHP repository packages. Just like a similar repositories, it's used to share various uh, open source packages for PHP packages. Well, uh, was a subject to command injection. It was actually an older vulnerability back in April 2021 that Sonar Source uh, found uh, by launching command injection into the repository code itself. The attacker, of course, could potentially have complete control over uh, this repository. This new vulnerability appears to be really just an incomplete patch to the older vulnerability. Luckily, there is no indication that the vulnerability was exploited so far. And of course, now packages patched this vulnerability, hopefully correctly uh, this time. 
And as I announced on Monday, there will be no podcast tomorrow for Thursday due to my travel. I should be able to put one out on Friday, but well, if it's missing, then maybe something uh, didn't go quite as well with uh, travel. Something got delayed or so. So uh, don't be too surprised if there won't be a podcast on Friday. I'll better be able to get one out on Monday. So thanks for listening. And again, if you like the podcast, please uh, do recommend it to others. Leave a good uh, recommendation on your favorite uh, podcast site. That's it for today. And talk to you again, hopefully on Friday. Bye.